Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. This is my third video and today I'm going to talk about shame gremlins. Um, I went on a course uh, not so long ago about shame and trauma and, and the effects that it has on the body, which I'll probably talk about in another video. Um, but one of the things that kind of struck me that I was really kind of drawn to was the lady on who led the course, a lady called Carolyn Spring. Um, she talked about this idea of having shame gremlins. Everybody has them within them. And... Um, what she did was she was quite open and honest about her shame gremlins and and the way that I kind of saw it was that these are the parts of us that are almost responsible for keeping us in our right sized boxes in our comfort zones um, pulling a ceiling on how much we can grow and um, through whatever fears that that we've accumulated through time I suppose um, when I look at mine my shame gremlins like I'm I'm fully aware that I come from a place of um, fearing rejection, needing acceptance and, and reassurance from other people, you know, from stuff that has happened, especially in early childhood, kind of leading up through life, um, where incidents have reaffirmed, I suppose, that sense that maybe I'm not good enough or that I'm rejectable. So what's happened over time is then I've developed these voices that aren't mine because I wasn't born with them, um, but I've developed these voices that, that I've internalised. And... Um, what's what's meant from that uh, what's happened from that is that I end up listening to those parts of us as opposed to having actual confidence in who I am because you know I think I'm all right I'm not I'm not a horrible guy I'm quite kind I'm quite caring you know and, and for whatever reason my brain dismisses all of that and goes straight to this kind of critical place um that the shame gremlins say so either things like you know you're too fat um you're too overweight you're too camp your voice is too gay um you know who's going to want to listen to you you're quite boring your videos are just somebody you sat in front of a camera you know talking so who is going to want to listen to you? and and I, and I have to deal with that on a daily basis if i do something wrong at football you know my brain goes straight to a, a place of oh people are going to recognize that they're not going to want me to play rejection you know and so I'm fully aware now that I am built from this place of um, automatic, uh, I'm rejected, I'm, I'm rejectable, I'm, I'm, people can walk away, I'm, I'm possibly not good enough. And so it's about me understanding those voices, where they're coming from, and taking a step back and, going to, and looking at my behaviour, looking at my um, reasoning for, for what I'm doing, and actually what I've learned is that I can come from a place of care, I can come from a place of kindness, and actually that's okay because that's also part of who I am. So it's about understanding where these shame gremlins are coming from, but also taking a step back and reassuring ourselves, not looking for it outwardly, reassuring ourselves of, of what we are, who we are, the good that we have, the bad that we have, you know, and having a sense of confidence in that. So just take a step back, look at the shame gremlins that you probably deal with on a daily basis, if not daily, then you know every other day, weekly basis, and think about what is it that I can do to, to argue those points. Because I bet you any money, if you were sat in my counsellor chair and you were listening to somebody who had your story, you'd probably respond in a very different way than you actually do to yourself from an automatic place. So take a little bit, st take a step back, have a look, reassess. Thank you very much.